Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Shonen and Chill, hosted by Zenrado and Oceans. Hello, hello. It's been a hot minute. It has been uh, quite the week. <laughs> been, I've been busy. You've been busy. The people I... haven't been busy because they're probably like, where's the fucking show? <laughs> well, you were you were down with work, and I was down with drugs. The sickness, uh... as it were. No, I wasn't even sick. I just had like a medical medical procedure, and they drugged me to fuck up. Uh, <laughs> nice. And all day I, I was hoping to get like fucked up enough so I can tweet something unhinged, but then it never happened. Ah, uh, what a shame! You can't even capitalize yeah. on it. Yeah, it, it sucks when you have like a career online because then you can't like tweet just the worst shit that comes to mind. Just wild insanity. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did tweet that I'm gonna go and get something long and hard stuffed down my throat. So, I did you know. see that one. Yeah, I did see that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, obviously, while we were on break, the manga sphere was not. So what's the what's the vibe? What's the news? Oh, man. Okay, so there's a, a couple of rest in pieces. So uh -huh. uh, super smartphone. Fucking gone and out of here. Damn. Um, rest in peace. Uh, same with Aliens Area. Super Smartphone Damn. made it to chapter 23. Aliens Area was, what, like 19? 20? Mm -hmm. Flat 20? Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Weren't the, weren't those two from the same batch yeah, they of were. new releases? Mm -hmm. God. Um, yeah, yikes. Uh, yeah. Both of them also say read more in the graphic novel, so I guess volume, like, whatever their last volume is, is going to get a little extended ending. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think... Um... I think Jump is now making that pretty much a regularity. Uh, I guess for better or for worse, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it doesn't change that much. Like, I guess it makes the endings less abrupt and out of nowhere. But yeah, but then again, I'm also not buying volume two of a manga with two volumes. So uh, I saw. Did you? I saw today that um, Ayashimon uh, got licensed in France. And it's like, God damn it, why? Yeah, have fun. <laughs> yeah, have, have fun, fun with that the... for, you know, a couple weeks. <laughs> Three volumes, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we had those cancellations. Um, in the meantime, Jump ironically released uh, Shonen Jump's Guide to Making Manga. <laughs> Which is, I don't want to say tone deaf, because, like, you got to do it sometimes, but it's really funny that it was at it the is. same time. <laughs> I mean, I think one of my fun favorite things about Shonen Jump in this thing is just the whole thing where they pretend nothing ever gets canceled. Everything just ends naturally. Yeah, which is so funny to me. There's like, oh yeah, obviously the author of Candy Flurry only wanted to draw 13 chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, then you have, like, the, the poor Wiz employee who has to advertise, like, Red Hood a year after its cancellation. <laughs> a year after its, yeah, it's already been canned. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, so that uh, book, The Guide to Make Manga, is out. Uh, it has a bunch of interviews from everyone who is currently in Jump and quite a few who were in Jump at one point. Um, so I really suggest that even if you don't buy it, track down the interviews and read them. They're really interesting. Uh, I love Gege's interview because it's literally just they ask him anything and he answers in two words and then circles back to saying, God, I suck at making manga. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize for this. <laughs> like he brings up the fact that his storyboarding process is a mess three separate times. <laughs> They're like, OK, you want to talk to us about like... um how you structured the calling game arc. He's like, oh yeah, I know. I suck at storyboarding. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I do not want to talk about that. <laughs> also, I absolutely adore that now we have an actual like quote of Gay Gay basically saying his biggest concern with calling games is to make it easy to understand even for people who speed read. Yeah, even for people who don't read it. Yeah, because he fully <laughs> expects people to just speed read his manga. Just which skim is skim through that shit, yeah. Man. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, we've had the anime adaptation of Chainsaw Man coming mm -hmm. out, and it's real solid. You should watch it. It's I still good. haven't. Yeah, you absolutely should watch it. 
Um, and then, well, of course, the big one is Hunter Hunter is back. Yep, Hunter Hunter returns. I think it's really funny. I I know like obviously narrative integrity and whatnot. Like you just have to keep the story moving forward. But it's really funny that it's been gone for like four years. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you open up the app and you see gone on the frog, like the the volume one cover picture, and then you open it up and it's like the four the four main guys at the top. Uh-huh. And then you read the chapter and no legacy character from like the <laughs> early in the story appears at all. <laughs> well, I mean, Gon's been Gon's been gone for uh, ever since Chimera End, right? Yeah, he's still got uh, whatever nen yeah, he... nen ickiness. Nenitis can't, can't be using his nenitis. Yeah, uh, he got I he got that. revived by the magical wishing child, and now he just can't use nen anymore. He got revived by the power of trans rights. Yeah, Love pretty that. much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, and aside from it's that, it's just we... that. <laughs> Tony Stark meme where it's like Robert Downey Jr. and just says he is not transphobic. <laughs> <laughs> Jarvis, copy and paste the trans pride flag from Google Images. <laughs> <laughs> um, as ever that, what, uh, do we have anything else? I thought there was something else. Uh, but I, the, the, I guess the new Naruto manga, the new new Naruto manga that's not Boruto, because everyone, I guess, was just like, we gotta do something. Yeah, the manga adaptation. Yeah. I think it's a manga adaptation of one of the novels, right? I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about it, and spoiler, wow, this is a lot better than Boruto. It sure is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's um, really funny to me that it has two authors and an artist. <laughs> All separate people. Well, yeah, because I'm assuming they're also counting the artist of the novel to this maybe i don't know is 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 the author of the actual or the artist of the actual manga is that uh junisaka no the art is uh shingo kimura Kimura. okay yeah then i wonder i wonder if i wonder if they're just giving kishimoto a story credit because naruto is his story and then i'm assuming is the one who actually wrote the this Um, i i assume that's the case i mean the novels are all in this weird meta state where they're very clearly meant to be canon but they all generally base themselves on stuff that was never established in the main story. But most of them actually fit very well. Like, um, I, one of my favorite things to come from the novels is the implication that uh, because Temari marries Shikamaru and leaves, the politics of the Sand Village all shift to trying to get Gara to fuck. <laughs> because they're like, we need an heir to the, Hoka- to the Kazekage family. And Gara is like, no, I don't care. Yeah, isn't he just, like, uh, making little cactuses and stuff in his downtime? I don't remember that, but I know that he ends up just uh, fucking adopting the first kid he sees with, like, magnet style. <laughs> that Where one. He's like, you, <laughs> you child, come with me. <laughs> I want that one. I just, I just love the, um, I just love the, like, domin- domino effect of, like, Shikamaru fights Temari in the tuning exam 20 years ago. And it all ends with a bunch of senators having a meeting on how to get Gara to get some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently it's uh, Borto or some sort of series canon that Gara just like gardens now. <laughs> just like <laughs> cool. makes flowers and shit. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about the the Naruto side story. Um, but aside from that, I don't think we have. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, regarding how we'll talk about the series that the last weeks of chapters uh i think yeah we agreed on that my hero and jutsu kaisen only had one chapter each over the last two weeks so we'll just talk about them as if they just came out um and for everyone else we'll talk mostly about the most recent chapter with some opinions about the the ones that we missed last week uh because we did read them i promise i promise we read manga even if it doesn't sound like it sometimes (laughs) (laughs) Ringing endorsement of the show. Boy, I love reading manga. I love reading it from left to right. <laughs> God, my favorite character from My Hero Academia? That's Izuku Meteoria. I love him. God, that fucking clip of um, Michael B. Jordan saying that his favorite anime is uh, Naturo. <laughs> Yeah, it's like not even close to right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, are you sure? Are you sure you grew up with this? It reminds me of the clip of uh, Chris Pratt 
like taking a minute to calculate the word Koopa in his head. And to make it sound as slurry as yeah, possible. Yeah, just as awful as possible. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, saw, I saw that clip. I like twitched when he called me a Koopa. <laughs> <laughs> Activate my fight or flight. <laughs> oh, no. That's like, um, <laughs> have you ever seen that clip of Toby Fox, the uh, developer of Undertale, holding like a speech in Japanese because he now works for um, Nintendo. And so he's speaking in Japanese and he just halfway through, he says Toho Project in like the most American accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if there's nothing else, I guess we can get into our top threes. What's what's cooking over with you? Okay. On that front. Uh, so, I think my... My number three is hard. I think it's Chainsaw Man. Oh-ho. Uh, my number two is Jujutsu Kaisen. And my number one is Undead Unlock. Oh, very nice. Uh, my number three is Jujutsu Kaisen. My number two is My Hero. And my number one is Undead Unlock. All right, look at that. Yeah, let's go. It worked, uh, worked out in the end. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, we'll talk about it, but Undead Unlock is so fucking good right it's now. It's so shit. crazy right now, yeah. And we're inevitably going to get people in the comments like, you don't even read that shit, but I don't care. <laughs> I, do, I, I do, look at I do not care. Okay, you know what, folks? Yes, we do not read Undead Unlock. We observe it. We, we experience it, is... it. Thank you very much. We sit our asses down and listen. <laughs> I guess we don't actually. Yeah. <laughs> if Dr. Nico's daughter is anything to go by. Yeah, apparently we do the opposite of that. Uh we just kind of gawk at it. We're like yeah. rubberneckers on a on a track a crash on a highway. We staring out our look... window like, ooh. <laughs> we vaguely look in its direction and we uh ape out a little. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh. All right, what's first? All right, so we got to go way back to find what mm -hmm. is first. It is... Chojin X. Oh, hey, yeah, the series that exists occasionally. It does, in fact, come out from time to time. <laughs> yeah, and hey, this was a pretty cool chapter. I like the combat. Yeah, it was cool. I like the, the variety of powers going on. I'll, I'll, sometimes this series annoys me when they're like, Oh, no! this technique the old, and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> like at the end of this one when he's like oh my god the, i the floor is being quagmired but the only one who can do that is the the monk of made up word <laughs> yeah like, okay the, the new chimera i'm like oh, excuse me i don't know what that means yeah what did you, what did you just call me <laughs> But uh, no, it, it is a super cool um, chapter. I like the little chase scene we get with Tokyo. Yeah, we're um, just, like turning back to pure human so he can't be tracked with the little Chojin sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I, I like the fight with the smoke guy. I think he's really cool. I like when um, the hood guy, as in our other, our other big guy, Azuma. when he's fighting. Yeah, when he's fighting the girl who can, like, multiply limbs. Like, they're fucking tearing him apart. Yeah, Jesus like, Christ. cracking all his bones and stuff, like, twisting his body around. Well, not just that. They're fucking, like, in the final panel of that fight on page um, 20, they're, like, peeling his skin off. Yeah, because they're all, like, biting him. Yeah. Good God. Very cool. Very good Ishida stuff. Um, and, yeah, just fun combat. Again, not anything where I can be, like, super analytical about it, but very fun. I also like, uh, uh this has a good joke in it when, um, they send Ellie off to go find, like, the other main characters and help them, and they give her a, a coat, and they're like, put that on, it's a robe of darkness, and she's just like, sure? I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm really liking um, the smoke guy's design. It's really fun funky. Yeah, he's got. He looks like otherworldly creepy in comparison to like the rest of the characters. I, I don't he, know if it's just... just like the the design of his face just looks like devilish compared to everyone else. Well, I think it's the mix between how lanky he is, 
and uh, the fact that he has like sideburns sometimes in some panels and sometimes he doesn't. He also has like no pupils. He's just got white, like eye whites most of the time. Hey, you know that's how you know he's serious about this. Uh, if your eyes aren't purely white, you're not committing to the grind. <laughs> you're not on the grind set. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're you're a mid tier male. <laughs> if your eyes aren't pure white when you concentrate. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, very very cool. Um, uh, of course, also you know with Ishida. You get you get twisting limbs. That's actually a thing he does fairly often in Tokyo Ghoul as well, where like someone's limbs get twisted and then he repairs them by twisting them back. Gross. That's yeah. That's a very specific thing. I kind of have only seen from him in the past, so it's funny that it pops back up here. Um, and yeah, I mean, as I said, not a whole lot to say. I still think the Bone Zone is such a funny ability. Yes, it is. Uh, and I, I do think it's kind of cool that my assumption is this Chimera guy is, like, sewing Chojin parts into his body to use. Because, mm -hmm. like, you see his hand is all, like, stitched on. like a... Yeah. And, you know, they said the, the only guy who has that ability is already dead, so I guess he, like, cut his bits up and added them to his gross body. My assumption. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Um, But, yeah. Also, like, that guy is kind of... He's one of the big bad guys, right? Yeah, he showed up earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it'll be interesting sort of where this goes now. Because, yeah, Shoujin X is one of those series that's just super hard to keep track of sort of long term. But yeah, it is interesting. Like, it's going to get sorted right back into my, like, reserves of my brain as soon as we're done talking about it. Yeah, I mean, same. <laughs> Absolutely same. Um, But all right. Uh, do you have anything else to say on it? I do not. All right. All right. Well, then next up is... I'm going to take a breath for this one. Uh, Naruto, Sasuke's story, the Uchiha and the Heavenly Stardust, the manga. <laughs> wow, that's... Um, you could just put a no jutsu at the end. And... <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> um. So right off the bat, why the fuck does this look so much better than Boruto? You know, I don't know, and I don't think it looks amazing, really. No, um, but I think it's I think not it like looks... Kishimoto level. But it really does look a lot better than Borto, and I don't know if it's because, like, when Ikimoto first started out on Borto, he had, like, his own design sheets for the characters that just mm -hmm. looked awful. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and this doesn't use that. This uses, like, the Borto character designs for the most part. It also yeah. might just be because there's no Borto characters in it, really. Well, yes, but, I mean, Snape Sasuke has not looked good in the Boruto manga ever, whereas here he looks... Honestly, I think some of these panels are very close to, like, late Kishimoto. Um, like, that's the thing that stuck out to me most. This looks like a, ch a chapter at like the end... Like, war arc of... era? Yeah. 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 Um, which is not... Which I can't say for Boruto at all. No. Um, so that, God, no. Yeah. Not even once. And, like, the action's also better, I think, or at least on par with what I remember from, like, again, late Naruto. With, you know, a better sort of readability and more focus on, like, paneling. Um, yeah, like, the action scene in the marketplace, uh, especially. Like, it, it was yeah. good, it was fun, it was creative. We got to see Sasuke bust out some powers, some good old mm -hmm. fan favorites. Like, the yeah. panel just where um he is... He switches places with the pot. Yeah. Like, that alone looked dynamic and cool. There's still a metric shitload of speed lines in it, but not Boruto yes. level, where they have speed lines mid-conversation. Mm -hmm. And also, there's well, still a background while the speed lines yeah. are there, which is appreciated. Yes, and uh, I don't know. I think it really benefits also from the setting, in that it isn't just a chapter of just fighting or just, like, crazy shit happening but it falls into the category of sort of end of Shippuden filler, where it's just, here's this overpowered character doing some crazy fun shit. Yeah, doing the wild shit out and do whatever. Like, yeah. Because Naruto has magic, I don't know, cancer? I don't know what this is. I didn't read this, yeah. nom this novel. He has uh, he has the Goku disease. Oh, he's is like, that oh. what it is? He's like, oh no, my heart is going to give out. 
I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought this was actually really cool in that one of my favorite parts of like the Shippuden anime is when they started adapting the novels because they are so low stakes compared to the war and they just allow the characters in them to shine. Like the Sa the other Sasuke novel, the one that actually got adapted into the anime, is super cool. Like I, I really love just seeing these characters, like the legacy characters, just doing relatively low stakes investigative shit. Um, like Sasuke obviously is at the upper end of that, where it's like, okay, what do you give him to do that he doesn't annihilate with like one look? Right. Um, and I think sort of a covert prison operation is pretty cool. Um, have, have you ever watched the animated Sasuke novel, actually? Is that the, like, what's it called? Sasuke Shinden or whatever, where he's, like, out and he meets the the little girl? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That one's pretty fun. It is good, yeah. Pretty... And I think Sasuke is a good character to do this kind of stuff with because his power set is, like, one, the, the bits of it that are just blowing shit up are cool. And two, mm -hmm. like, there's a lot you can do for fun narratively with, like, the Rinnegan and the Sharingan. Like, I think they used it pretty well here. Mm -hmm. Where, like, yeah. instead of having it be a big fight, like, using the Rinnegan space stuff for a chase scene is pretty cool. And obviously like, making the the guy who took a hostage, throwing him into a Genjutsu immediately with the Sharingan. So he thinks mm -hmm. it's just a watermelon. Like, pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy... Again, I really enjoy Naruto characters when they're A, in a small stake story, and B, not accompanied by Boruto characters. Yes. <laughs> it's also nice it. like seeing this is something i like even outside the confines of naruto just in general but like seeing really overpowered characters use their abilities in just like kind of casual ways because like sasuke could have just outrun those dudes if yes, he wanted he to but he didn't and it was cool it's just fun mm -hmm. seeing people like using these abilities without having to be fighting someone else to the death for like 40 chapters yeah exactly and another thing that I like is just spending more time in the Naruto world, because I do actually really like it in, like, the Naruto era. Uh, I'm not as fond of it in the Boruto era, I think. Uh, Boruto kind of missed the mark for me in that regard, uh, a thing I've never said before. Um, <laughs> Stunning revelation. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I don't know, I, I always felt like Boruto's setting was almost spiteful towards the old one, where it's like, oh, no, this isn't your grandpa's Naruto. Like, they have skyscrapers and Game Boys now, you nerd. <laughs> um, I always felt like, okay, we get it. You want to you do something new, and you're not very good at it, so your, result, so your solution is to just shit on what was old. Okay, sure, bet. But I like, it when it, I like this era of the Naruto timeline, um, or at least what seems to be this era. Because you, when we talked before, you said it takes place in the Boruto era, but honestly, does it? Like you do, you do see Sarada, that uh, one time. Sarada is there. Um, I, I saw a discussion on Twitter that it was like during, like Boruto esque time frame. Okay. When we see Sarada, I think she has her her headband on. So yes, it would she be does. Post the, after the, I guess. When they go through whatever their little exam is. Yes. Um, yes. Because isn't that what the beginning of Boruto is? Is like him getting, his, fucking headband. Are you asking me to recite Boruto I don't remember. to you? I check the forbidden texts. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Check the apocrypha. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, look. I, okay, then time frame is probably the wrong way to say. It, but like this setting feels more classically Naruto than like you know modern Konoha does. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel like a modern city where for some reason they still fight with throwing knives. Yeah, no. Yeah. Also, I love the I love the raptor. I love the dinosaur. Yeah, the random dinosaur. Look at this guy. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? No, because it's so cool. Because it's it's just such typical, like, Kishimoto random nonsense. It's so reminiscent of, like, oh, yeah, this is the forest of death. And here's just a ginormous snake for no reason. And no one's ever going to mention it. I and like... also, you know, like. <laughs> I like how they made a prison. Like, the concept behind this prison is insane. Because they're like, oh. We don't even have to lock people in this prison. Why? Because there's just a fucking Velociraptor outside. 
<laughs> Nobody gets to go home, not even the staff, because we're all trapped in here by a velociraptor. <laughs> that, and also it's like, what if they all try to escape at once? Does the veloc is the velociraptor always, like, a little faster than you, no matter how many of you there are? <laughs> Every like, minute you're not running, he is only getting closer. Also, are they trying it. to imply to me at the end here that Sasuke could not beat a Velociraptor because I don't agree? <laughs> I don't know, man. Because they're, they're trying to make it look scary, and they're like, oh, you can never get out of here because of this Velociraptor. But it's like, dog, I, Sasuke I, I could don't know, probably man. kill like 500 of these things. I know, man. Those teeth look pretty sharp. I don't know if Sasuke looks pretty can quick, though. that. Like, <laughs> Where does he rank in the reflexes? <laughs> is he planetary or not? That's what I need to know. Is he out of reversal? Can, but can he beat Goku? <laughs> <laughs> I just want like, oh my god, I want like tier lists for like all the characters in Naruto. And just at the top, there's a tier called just a fucking raptor. <laughs> the idea that like... Sasuke stumbles into this prison and just the most powerful creature in the history of the franchise is this <laughs> velociraptor that just runs around outside. <laughs> what does this raptor <laughs> eat if nobody tries to escape? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Raisin Bran or something. <laughs> <laughs> I really want an edit of this velociraptor like stop stepping on the guy, but it's Madara underneath him. <laughs> Oh my! Oh fuck! I, I might need. I might need to do this. This might be community service. Oh, it's so funny! Uh, I don't know. Like this is the kind of shit that I miss from like the old kooky era of like the big three, where it's just like, yeah, there's just this random velociraptor. It's like, um, or not even big three. Like in Dragon Ball, like yeah, there's dinosaurs and there's like animal people. Why are you asking? Yeah, it's it's, just, yeah, no one even is no one's even like, oh my god, there's a fucking raptor. They're just like, oh yeah. He tried to get away, he found the raptor. Yeah. The the raptor everybody <laughs> knows about that's perfectly normal. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's so funny. I love it. Um but yeah, no, this was this was a pretty cool thing. I'm ex I'm actually excited to keep reading this. Um It's good to get new Naruto content again that isn't literally the worst thing in existence yeah is there like a release schedule for this or is it just kind of whenever they have time because there's no I thought it was weekly. next one on this i thought it was weekly is it this is a big chapter well, and there's no well it doesn't say no, new chapter in a week like the other weekly ones do okay well then i don't know because i uh, it's I, released I on, like, it would the... be monthly because if kishimoto is actually involved in any way that man is not <laughs> down to be working so he's like, whatever, it's the shortest release schedule, I can, or the longest one I could possibly get. Um, well, I know it's on uh, it's on, on a web service, not Jump Plus, but a different one. Um, so yeah, it might be monthly, actually. Or it might be bi-weekly, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, usually they have like a when the next one's coming out on the app anyway, but they don't for this. So it might just be whenever they feel like putting the next one up. Damn. Choji Next style. I need more Naruto Raptor Rudin. Yeah, I really need to see this raptor. Just like I really want there to just be random reaction shots outside of just the raptor <laughs> every time he's just... is like looking around. He's Naruto's slash Takizawa. <laughs> they, just... <laughs> they just show him in a panel and every chapter immediately gets better. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're quickly warming up to this raptor. He's about to become the next show, Dude, I love show him. meme character. I, I, I love old Mino. He's so... Again, this is how you make cool settings. You just throw in something random. Like, uh, uh, aspiring authors, you don't know how to make your story more interesting? Add a raptor. Just, yeah, just put in a velociraptor that's just there for some reason. Yeah. Just at any point. It makes everything more interesting. This is because... too detailed for a thumbnail, but a really good thumbnail for this would be that girl from Jurassic Park with Sasuke's head on her with the Velociraptor on top of the counter. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> it's too much for a thumbnail, but it's really good. 
Uh, it's okay. I mean, we're we're approaching episode 100, so uh, maybe it's time for like a thumbnail redesign again. <laughs> oh, baby, season three. <laughs> season three. <laughs> we'll have like five episodes by the end of 2025 at our current <laughs> release schedule. <laughs> it's fine. We're just you know we're 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 honoring Hunter Hunter's return. Exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. Honoring we're... Togashi's legacy. Full immersion. Also, is that <laughs> raptor eating this guy's nuts? Uh, I couldn't tell you specifically. Um, I like. I'd like to think he does. Well, I think he's face. Oh no, he is face up. Yeah, I guess he is. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. This prison, no one can escape it because there's a raptor running around. If he finds you, he's gonna eat your nuts. He's gonna eat your balls. Yeah, he might also kill you, but that's more like fifty-fifty. Yeah, it's just yeah. The the killing is just the an accident on the yeah. way to the actual end goal. Well, he, while well, he's trying to get to the balls. <laughs> what about women? Well, once he discovers you have none, then he gets angry, and well... That's when the killing is intentional. <laughs> <laughs> That's curtains. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, very cool out of 10. Yes, I'm Would a big fan of uh, Naruto side story, Sasuke Stone Ocean. I'm sure it'll be pretty good. I am very excited for more chapters of Sasuke and the Velas Velociraptor, Will They, Won't They. <laughs> All right. What's next up What's is next? Uh, Blue Box. I, I, I like this manga. Have I mentioned this? It's I like good. it a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I like uh, two... all the little Will They, Won't They looks in this one. It's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this entire like little two-chapter arc where he goes out to look for her was pretty sweet where uh you know it's sort of again it's sort of this whole conflict between what do i feel versus what should i feel and how do i act versus how do i want to act it's just interesting stuff seeing that all play out um and of course right as i'm like oh they really should become a couple uh hina appears again mm -hmm. and does some expert shit. timing yeah literally um, but yeah, no, very cool. I like, <laughs> I still like the, 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 the girl narrowing down uh, the, uh, cap, not a team. Yeah. Team cap, the team manager. That's what it is. Yeah. Team yeah. manager. She's fun. I can't believe I was worried about her inclusion. She She's so fun. I did get a little worried when she was like, oh, Taiki has the most beautiful form out of everyone. I was like, no. Yeah, Keep no, in your lane. Back. <laughs> back. Back. The spray bottle out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, I do like her too. And I kind of mm -hmm. like that there's like added depth to her character because she's like been bitching and moaning the whole time about having to do any of the actual job. And uh, it's nice to see that actually she is paying attention and she's like picking up stuff about it and she's noticing when people improve and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, it's very cool. And then that one random guy who pro probably now has a crush on her. She's going to break his heart. Yep. You hate to see it. It's a shame. Yeah, it really is a shame. It's okay. The The Harlot Chronicles continue. <laughs> would, be a sh would be a shame if they stopped, really. She seems yeah, so happy. Yeah, we with really her. need them to, to remain. I mean, I, in a way, that is kind of cool to just have a character around who's like, yeah, I just, like, break boys' hearts, like, in the background. <laughs> while the actual story's going on. Yeah, it's like it's like the opposite of having like a character like um fucking oh god, what's his name? Barney from How I Met Your Mother? Is that his name? I don't know. The Playboy? Yeah, whatever. I haven't watched that show. Cuz every cuz every sitcom has like that one character is like, "Yeah, I'm a dude and I like have sex all the time." And also I'm like borderline illiterate. <laughs> uh So, you know, like Joey from Friends. Like you just have that, but like as a as a woman, that's actually pretty cool. It's, yeah, I can get it's about. It. I like her. Yeah, I mean, I like Joey from Friends. He's about the only character I do like in that fucking show. I don't really know anything about Friends either. Good, good God! <laughs> Wait, aren't you dating a white woman? I am. And she has not forced you to watch Friends. No, we do not watch Friends. We have been watching the Great British Baking Show, so that's where I'm currently at. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, if she's not forcing you to watch Friends, never let her grow. 
No, we, we have not even watched a single episode of Friends this entire Good. time. Good. No, uh, British Bake Off is fun. British Bake Off is very cool. We watched it as well. Are you watching the newest one? Yes. The Halloween one was cool. Yeah, well, wh who are you rooting for? Uh, Shabira, probably. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. I, I think I, I might be Sandro or Yanush all, all the way. I do like both of them, too. They're both good, but I don't know. I like when Shabira's like, yeah, this is the most insane shit you've ever heard of, and I'm putting it in a cake. And they're like, <laughs> oh my god, it's actually good, like, every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think Sandro just made a really good impression on me, because it's like, you know, you have this buff guy... And then they explain, like, his life, and they're like, he's a full-time nanny, and he bakes in his free time. I'm like, you are a king. You are a <laughs> Chad. I would give my life for you. Absolute legend. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no. What do you Have you watched, like, any of the previous seasons? Yeah, I've watched all of them. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, okay so what well, do you think about All of them after the, the network switch. I haven't seen one through four. Okay, so, uh, actually, you've seen more than me, then. Uh, what do you think? Is this year's batch truly the strongest they've, they've ever had? Mm, I don't know. This is the first time where they've had a grandma on it, and the grandma wasn't, like, not that good. Mm -hmm. So maybe. I really liked the, the previous season with uh, Giuseppe. Yeah. I feel like that was... Oh, the, my God. <laughs> that was, I think, I, the best one from start to finish so far for me. I, I love Giuseppe so much. I... Uh, wrote to him on Twitter about the fucking fig pizza. And I saw season. that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Giuseppe so much. Did you hear that uh, he's now the head judge for Bake Off Italia? I did not hear that, but that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, this is a very weird tangent for anyone yeah, who doesn't Blue watch. Box. <laughs> really good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Blue Box, British Bake Off. It's the same, really. Uh, I think the... <laughs> I, I think the conclusion here is that unless Taiki bakes a cake for Chinatsu, it's curtains. Yeah, it's he's not, not gonna happen. Not. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to perform and then you're gonna have to send that cake into Paul Hollywood so he can give you like some absolutely unhinged feedback that makes zero sense. Absolutely useless in every capacity, yeah. <laughs> God, but I I do find him kind of funny in that he's so he's so devoid of substance anytime he speaks. <laughs> Yeah, he always gives, like, these really long explanations for what ultimately amounts to, like, I took it out of the oven, like, a couple minutes too early. <laughs> yeah. But it takes him, like, ten minutes to get there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so the Blue Box gets a Watch British Bake Off out of ten. You really should. It's good. Yeah, uh, I mean, some uh... some weeks someone puts figs on pizza, and then you don't I'm feel quite as good. I'm they didn't hate that. I thought for sure they are going to be like, no. Honestly, my opinion of everyone in that tent went down a little bit. Although, to, when to, no you know, one this is kind of like, every time I watch the British Bake Off and they make something that's not, like, traditionally fancy, and they mm -hmm. show, like, the most fancified version of it, I'm like, you guys are not, like, yeah, you're not you're really not. getting this. Like, uh, in, the, in the Halloween one, they're like, oh, we're going to make s'mores. They're these exact pretty-looking cookies. And I'm like, you have never seen s'mores in your life. <laughs> right? Right? S'mores I was is so a mad at cracker, that. a melted Hershey bar, and a destroyed marshmallow. <laughs> that is what a like, s'mores is. Yeah, it's the same with, like, the, when, when they did uh, pizzas. It's like, dude, a pizza is supposed to come from, like, a broken oven in yeah, a tiny a, a, restaurant. A brick with some fire around it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Served to you by someone who's as greasy as his pizza. Like it's it's part of the culture. You can't you can't really fancify it. Yeah, they um, did it. They kind of did it with tacos too. But oh, how do they say it? Tacos. Tac. I mean, tacos. okay. The, there's always that undercurrent of you know. Oh, look at that. The elderly British judging foreign food. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder. And, you know, um, they, they kept calling the actual shell the taco. Like, mm -hmm. like the stuff in it was not. It was just, And I don't know if that's correct, because they objectively know more about food than me. But that's uh -huh. the first time in my life I've ever heard someone call only the shell the taco. Well, I don't know. I, I don't respect their authority that much, especially after the pizza episode. I was always under the assumption that the taco was the finished product of me everything too. in the shell. Me too. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I also, one thing that always amazes me is during the technicals, when they get no instruction, 
and they're like, you have to do a make a Garibaldi cake. And they're all like, ah, yes, a Garibaldi cake. Okay, and just do it from memory. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Garibaldi cake? Well, I'm more impressed when half of them are like, I don't know what this is, and I've never heard of it before, and they still end up making, like, something that's pretty close to what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's like... What's even funnier is with the Garibaldi cake specifically is that it's named after Garibaldi, the Italian national hero. So I thought it was an Italian dish. So I text my dad, I'm like, what's a Garibaldi cake? And he just replies basically with, what did you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, what, what are you talking about? What's a Garibaldi cake? <laughs> uh, God damn, I, I'm, I'm so glad uh, Great British Bake Off started releasing in Weekly Shonen Jump so we can talk about it. Yeah, dude, Blue Box fans must hate this show. Because this happens every time. And now we've got another 10-minute blue box segment. That is, we spent less than a minute talking about it. The blue box segment, also known as What Tangent Did They Think Of This Time? I'm going to title it The Great British Blue Box in the actual <laughs> in the timestamps. Let's go. No, we, the, the worst part is British Bake Off is weekly, so we it can is. actually... Yeah. What's next? What, what's next week? Is next week uh, Moose Week? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I didn't look at what next week was. I saw the preview. I think someone is doing, or at least at one point they have to do ice creams, I think. So it's like a dessert week, maybe? No, we already had dessert week. But Moose Week is just dessert week again, but with very specific <laughs> instructions. Well they, some, well, they sometimes have, like, specific things. I mean, they have, like, chocolate week. And oh, yeah, chocolate I guess they always dessert. do, like, a caramel week and stuff. Yeah. Um... Do we want to move on? Because we could probably go on about this. <laughs> we need to have a spin-off show that's just us talking about this. Okay, but... Uh, Take off and chill. The um, thing is, if we if we were to do it, you would have to talk in, like, a bad British accent. Oh, I could do it. I, I could easily sound like Paul Hollywood. Because he just okay. sounds like a gruff guy who gives shitty okay. advice. Okay, let her, let her rip. Oh, man. I show the class. Best. All right, hang on. I have to remember what he sounds like because he's very nondescript. <laughs> what does he sound like? <laughs> <laughs> the the bread is quite short, isn't it? No, that's not quite right. I no, just know he keeps... that's too high pitched. It's, it's deeper than that. Hello, I'm Paul Hollywood, and I cheated on my wife. I cheated on my wife with a with a judge of another baking show. <laughs> Not Prue, Hello. thank God. Oh, I mean, yes. Prue is precious, and we must protect her. Paul Hollywood, we have to bully him. Well, also, she's like in her mid-80s. Hey, and also, she's a dame. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, I don't know, what does Paul Hollywood sound like? I don't know, he's like a, just a deep, deeper than normal British guy. I really think you shouldn't have put the... You shouldn't have put the cheese in the pizza. It shows uh, a lack of confidence. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> should have replaced that bit cheese of, with... Bit of a mess, isn't it? Uh, the, the crisp is very short. It's very short, which I think works wonderfully with the ganache. <laughs> I don't think you quite you quite hit it off with the meringue. <laughs> Good God, this must be this... unintelligible to people yeah, who don't want Yeah, this is like unhinged. We need to move on. <laughs> yeah, we have a big episode today. Why I would know, we that? already have so much to do, and we've spent 15 minutes talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's, what is next? Uh, fucking aliens area. Okay, it's dead. It's dead, and it wasn't very good. All right, next is. <laughs> Is that actually all we're doing? Yeah, that's it? all I'm saying. Next okay. is Sakamoto Days. <laughs> Which was very cool. It was really good, yeah. Uh, I'm a sucker for any panel where someone goes, he's fast, and that person's fist is in the panel. <laughs> yeah, that. And also, the the uh, I want to specifically mention the page turn from page one to two. Just, you know, you're going from uh, bottom, from top to bottom. You're reading the dialogue of the film guy. And then you get ready to read the next page, so your gaze snaps up, and oh no, there's Sakamoto's foot that has snapped up as fast as your gaze did. Uh -huh. And it's such a cool way to do that. I love that. Um, and yeah, super cool fight. I, 
I love the, the fucking speech. It was like, do you know the ma- difference between a masterpiece and a flop? It's whether or not I'm the one who made it. Yeah. <laughs> I love this guy. It's going to suck when he gets killed. He's great. Yeah, no, he's, he's super funny. I love him. Um, and yeah, no, very fun chapter. Uh, of, as usual, like the combat choreography just goes dummy hard mm-hmm. every time in Sakamoto. I also like that apparently our invisible friend is going to betray us to like Goodwill Diavolo right here. Uh huh. So that's neat. I didn't expect that to happen. I thought he was just going to kind of be one of those like, I'm a background weirdo, kind of like the sniper guy was just like a background weirdo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, apparently there's, and also like, he's looking for his little brother, which I don't recall them saying that that like Slur had his brother. No, um, isn't his brother the guy who wears masks all the time? Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Oh my god! Oh no, this is Nico's daughter all over again. It is Nico's daughter all over again because I don't, I couldn't tell you jack shit about half I, of I the characters. I thought it was. Um... I watched the pretty fights and I go, damn, that's sick. Yeah. No, I, th- I thought his brother is um, the masked guy. That Because, yeah, Slur has him. Uh, Wait, let's is see. Is that his name? I didn't, For some reason... Oh, no, you're right. It is the masked guy. It didn't register in my head as that was his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because uh, he we took have... him and the fangirl at the same time. Congrats, folks. We've established a fact the series told us like eight weeks ago. We've established that we, after a little bit of prodding, can remember events that have happened to us in the past. Please be patient with us. We are very old and sad. Okay, yeah, we're coming off a 15-minute talk about baking, and that's all that's in my brain right now. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I also like the little bit with the, with the grandpa. Yeah, we're, I kind of felt like we were going to get the reveal that he's, like... I, I'm also kind of disappointed about it. That they're like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm actually a badass as well. <laughs> because I kind of thought mm-hmm. it would be neat to finally have a character that wasn't. Because um, mm-hmm. it feels like every single time, this is, like, the fifth time we've had some old person shuffle in and act, be like, actually, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> um, well, I guess fine. it's fine. Like, of... it's still cool, but <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit different. Well, yeah, I think it's one of those things, because Sakamoto seems to be primarily concerned with taking people who you usually don't see fight in media, you know, the old and the chubby, um, and to just give them cool fight scenes. So, yeah, but I, I get what you mean. Um, and, yeah, I'm interested to see what, what the deal is with uh, Club Jam. I fucking love Club Jam. Yeah, he's so... He's done nothing in the story he so far. He has done absolutely so nothing. And he's, like, my second or third favorite character. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's it's super fun. I'm very... I'm very happy uh, how Sakamoto is currently. Just a lot of fun every week out of ten. All right. So next up is... Uh... Oh, God. Ginka and Gluna. Luna. All right. Yeah. Uh... You know what? I'm starting to see the vision this manga I has. I am not. No? You know I don't know who this little black clover bird boy is. Um, I don't really care about the tiny man and they can't refuse. I did think it was funny that they're doing the fusion dance, so that, that was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just feels more like, oh, we're just moving around and shit's happening, and that's it. <laughs> like, There's yeah, no rhyme I mean, or I... reason to what we're doing. There's just shit happening. Now we have to have a mini arc where we rescue the tiny stone version of the little guy that we just got. Yes, but I will counter that with saying uh, the the enemy guy has a cool design. Yeah, his like angel mode. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Like biblically accurate. I don't know angel. why he turns into a black clover character afterward, but yes. Uh, I don't know. You know, market research shows the black clover is doing all right. Yeah, it's doing okay. Yeah. No, I don't know. I. When they were sort of walking up, <laughs> the, the tone of that, yeah, was... <laughs> <laughs> that tone was so. It it, it crashed my app. <laughs> John Shonen Jump was like, "You're not gonna talk shit about my homie Tabata." <laughs> How dare you? Um, but no, I don't know. When they were sort of walking up the mountain and they sort of look upon that view, 
I did sort of get the vibes of, okay, you want me to just sort of sit back and enjoy this, like, tour, like, this guided tour through someone's D&D setting, which, honestly, I can appreciate. I kind of wish the story were better, but if this series is going to, throughout its lifetime, be like, and here is this cool concept that I came up with in my head for a D&D campaign, uh, yeah, that's, that's all right. I don't need it to be much more. Um, I think this first, like, big fight is probably going to be a good indication of what the series' priorities are. Because, you know, you're, you're in Shonen Jump, you're about to have your first big fight. That's where you really make your claim of, okay, what am I actually about? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, do I want to be about fights? Do I want to be about, sort of, the adventure? Is this going to be, like, a Looney Tunes fight? Uh, I guess we'll see. So, you know, it's, it's all right. It's whatever. All right, well, that's all I got for it. it, was, it was so, <laughs> all right, yeah. Moving on. So, then. yeah, we gotta we gotta make up time on the. <laughs> gotta squeeze in Paul Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So next up is a kind of anashi. Which was fucking good as usual. I I for some reason maybe it's just because I don't have a human memory, but like I, I realize that we're only on chapter thirty five of this, and I'm blown away. <laughs> it yeah, feels like right? so much has happened. Well, it's what happens when a story has a clear direction. You know, when when it's not uh, when it uh, having a new uh, a new jump series that doesn't just meander around until it gets canceled, um, or doesn't just immediately rush to like major shit. Having a, a story like this that has like a clear structure and a clear sort of escalation of uh, conflict, yeah, feels nice, doesn't it? It does. It like. And, you know, normally I hate, like, well, I don't hate, but I'm not super invested in, like, the Rakugo-specific chapters. Mm -hmm. But, like, as soon as I realized that she was, like, shitting on the guy, the whole chapter got way better. (laughs) Like, all of a sudden it took off. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to fucking be great. And now we have to, like, see what his little clapback is going to be. Oh, man, it's good stuff. Yeah, because uh, I think th- it did take me a little aback at the start of this chapter when I was like, okay, this entire chapter is going to be a Rakugo performance and one based on wordplay. I was like, okay, that's going to be hard. Um, But uh, once I understood the whole thing, where you just have uh, Sun and G in everything, and that's sort of the joke, not only was it actually kind of funny, it was also super impressive from a translation standpoint. Like, making this work in English cannot have been easy. Oh, yeah. I would imagine not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think and I think you can see artifacts of that, because there are actually quite a few lettering mistakes in this one. Really? Yeah, there's quite a few times when a word gets repeated, and I don't think that's the actual text there. Because, uh, um... What is it? When they're first talking about shrines or whatever. Um, every temple has an official name name. Do you think that that's the text, or do you think that's an error? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell because it's, you know, all done up so as foreign. a performance. Yeah. But then there's one where I know it's wrong, because on page uh, 21, in the bottom right panel, she says, oh, instead of apologizing, she, she gave the customer a piece of her mind. Yeah. I, th- I and yeah, I mean, I don't know if my brain just overread all instances of this, and this is like a stylistic choice of the Rakugo. Uh, someone in the comments will surely tell me. Uh, thank you in advance. Please don't be rude. I will cry. Um, but yeah, I do think that that may be sort of an artifact of how difficult this must have been to sort of put together as a chapter in English. Because, um, you know, no matter how difficult a chapter is, they always only have about a week to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, that's I don't know because it's hard when it's in a in a performance setting because you don't know if it's the cadence of the way that she's trying to deliver the performance or if it's just to fuck up. Mm-hmm. Also, I just love the the final pose Akane strikes on the double spread in the end. I just love the way the manga uses her. She's so expressive, which is yeah, so important is. for her like design a theater is manga good in general. Like, yes. she's always got fantastic facial expressions. Yes. And yeah, I just love, and it's sort of just in the larger sense of Shonen Jump, I love that we have a female main character 
whose like main appeal is just that she's a fucking like cool person, mm -hmm. someone you'd want to hang out with. I, I really enjoy that, especially coming you know from Shonen Jump, uh, with their history. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's call it that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that, I suppose. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, super cool. I'm interested to see where this goes next. All right, next up is uh, Mashal. Which was pretty cool. Uh, seems like we're finally moving on from the from the key. Slowly. Yeah, I, I, he went Popeye mode with Honey, and that was it. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, our fun. our bad guy went Super Saiyan three, which was interesting. Mm hmm. Uh, I liked the way he was killing them with like one, one finger. Yes, that was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then the fight with Sand Guy was pretty cool. Yes, where Sand Guy's actually in a fight that he's probably going to lose. Mm -hmm. Um, it was it was all cool. It, it's there's not a lot to talk about here. It's just all cool. But yeah, it's just all action. Yeah, it's just cool action. Um, I I will say, uh. The bad guy being this strong really has like old uh, battle manga vibes. Where it's just like, yeah, he's just an unbeatable wall. Yeah. He can decimate you with no a No matter what you do, yeah, it's not gonna make a difference. Mm hmm Which is cool. It's a it's a kind it's a kind of vibe that I appreciate. Yeah. But that's all I've got, because oh, there's yeah, literally nothing same. in it but, but punching. Uh yes. next up is for some reason this late in the show, the elusive samurai. <laughs> Oh, buddy boy. I just don't care about anything that's happening. I don't actually know why I haven't raised this up for, for cancellation yet. Maybe it's because we're running out of stuff to talk about and uh, running out of series at this rate. Uh, you're waiting on me to catch up to Spy Family, which is I opened uh, my manga reading app three separate times over the last two weeks to get started. And I just, again, I just forgot every time. Unfortunate. Unfortunate, yes. We really need you on Spy Family and Yosakura Family so we can stop reading The Elusive Samurai. I just don't care. Well, yeah, well, now... This chapter, the whole sequence of the main bad guy realizing who uh, our main guy is, that was pretty cool. That was well-paneled with, like, the pixelation and, like, his face slowly turning mm -hmm. to face him. And um, I like the, the little bit about the girl that he, like, kind of became friends with realizing mm -hmm. that he was like tricking her mm -hmm. and getting mad about it yeah it was, it was all right was, yeah um i also do like the way it's visualized that the news spreading throughout japan is like visualized as like lightning strikes mm -hmm. that's very cool that's very fun um but yeah wow i did not care about the last like two months of this manga no it's just yeah it's hard to yeah. Don't care about any of this really anymore? Yeah, let's just let's just. Uh, how, how about? What do you think, Sam? How about you and me? We get out of here. We we get out of this elusive samurai All bullshit. Right. Hey, you know what? Yeah, we'll just we'll fill the segment in with the baking show until <laughs> you yeah, catch exactly. up with my family. Yeah, we'll 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 check in with uh, Paul Hollywood's son every week. <laughs> the elusive shortbread. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the bread king <laughs> i mean that is his nickname that pretty That's much is his nickname yeah yeah uh all right so now we're in top three territory mm -hmm. we've got chainsaw man uh the last two chapters the yes. school shooting arc the, the, yes um i like the the reveal of her devil mode it's creepy and cool looking mm -hmm. uh, the design is neat I like um, the plan by War to basically, like, I'm going to use you to bait Chainsaw Man here because he's mm -hmm. going to come save everyone while you're rampaging. Mm -hmm. um, I like her weapons. I think they're funny. The The triple-headed pencil spear is really funny looking. <laughs> yes, it absolutely is. Um, and in general, I just like this whole this whole little setup. Like, I like we get to see the Devil Hunter Club, and they're, like, actually competent for a bit. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they do, they manage for a while mm -hmm. until uh, the devil goes uh, goes rogue. Well, I also like, because, you know, it's the whole thing is about, like, the Justice Devil 
and it's like turning their version of justice into power. And I like how that's almost immediately exploited by like, I was trying not to hurt you because you're innocent, but you're teaming up on me and that's mean and dishonorable. So you're actually bad. And then that mm -hmm. immediately results in like them all getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, it being Fujimoto, just super cool dynamic art and paneling. Like um, on page three, the way Asa like flies across the corner, like around the corner and the top panel is so funky and so cool. Yes, um, through the window. Yeah. Yeah. And also page one, obviously, like the very sort of filmic uh, like framing of the fight. Mm -hmm. I even something... like the little spin move that she's doing in the top of uh, page two. Yes, yes, very cool stuff. Um, it's just interesting, I guess, to see more devil huntery stuff again. Because I think Chainsaw Man was very full of that for a while. And then pretty much right after the um, Hell arc, it kind of all became about, well, suffering, really. And agony, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this it's pretty cool to sort of have part two return to that a little, because I'm sure we'll be back in the soup of suffering very soon. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure we'll be in there by the end of this arc, considering yeah, that you know, probably. it's her friend in the hybrid devil mode. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I do like the, um, the fact that war is like swapping out on purpose, which is not something mm -hmm. that, based on their dynamic, you think they would do. So I'm kind of excited to see that relationship evolve. And I also like the visual of the scar lightning on her face as she turns back. Yeah. That uh, cool. In general, I think that's actually one of the coolest ideas uh, Fujimoto has uh, done so far for a character design, where it's like they're the same person, but their scar is the note who is whom. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's one Denji's of those... devil mode is such obviously a stark contrast to what he normally looks like because he turns into a chainsaw yes. monster. Um Having the only real difference be that War has the the wound on Asa's face from chapter one uh, mm -hmm. is really cool. Also, I could bet the f the shape of that wound is not accidental. It has like some meaning, um, but I couldn't be I wouldn't be able to tell you what. But it feels like one of those things that would have something uh, attached to it, some meaning attached to it that you wouldn't know unless someone points it out to you. Right. So, uh, please comments. Someone be will the tell one us, to point sure. it out. Yeah, be the one to point it out to us, and we'll send you some shortbread. <laughs> Homemade shortbread. Yeah, you do not want to eat my bakes. I have baked <laughs> twice in my life, I think. As in, like you know, cookies and cakes and stuff like that. I have baked like dinner food. Yeah, well, it's all it's all baking, on some level. I guess. <laughs> like, I've I've baked pizza. I've made pizza. Yeah, that's, that's baking. Okay, then you I've baked way more yours. than twice. Huh? You didn't even put figs on yours. Yeah, that's true. I didn't put figs on mine. I put eggs on mine. Yeah, that sounds good. I'd eat that. Yeah, it's fucking amazing, dude. Eggs is one of those foodstuffs that just, it makes everything better, no matter where you put it. I mean, I shouldn't say it that loud because someone is going to find the one fucked up combination. The nastiest possible version, yeah. Egg, eggs in milk. Oh, God. There, okay. I, I found it. Yeah, yeah, there it is. We found it. Oh, no, oh. that's gross. Um... My, my, my stomach, like, uh, burped the moment I said it, so <laughs> I felt it, like, twitch. So uh, there you have your answer, I guess. Oh, God. Uh, all right, so next up is My Hero Academia. A uh, butter me sideways and call me Karen. I actually really enjoyed this chapter. It's alright. Uh, I think for me, it's just this is the kind of stuff I like about MHA, like uh, the whole aspect of how the existence of quirks affects the wider aspects of society and how that sort of domino affects the way the world is. I am I've always been a fan of that, um, and I've always been, always been sad that this mutant side plot seemed very abandoned. So I am glad it's come back, and I think it's very cool that it's come back in a way that allows two notoriously, chronically no-name characters, uh, Shoji and Koda, to do some shit. So that's cool. My caveat is, of course, haha, 
this should have been dealt with way earlier and not yeah more at consistently the cusp of the end. instead of like yeah. not at all and then it's a giant explosion at the end. Yes, and of course, I mean the big one is, hey Hori, why did you invent a fictional minority, and have them then call the black man <laughs> a, a a privileged idiot? Like yeah, what, what did you mean by that? A little, a little tone deaf on that one, maybe. Yeah, yeah I think um, it's just. I don't think just to be clear, because there's going to be that one person. Um, you already know who you are, but to be clear, I don't think this is like intended in any weird way. I think it really is just Hori being extremely clumsy. With yeah, I kind of feel up. like it just so yeah. happened to be that he chose a character on a dartboard, and it was Rock yeah. It was right here. Um. Yeah, because I mean, I think this this entire like mutant subplot, as cool as I like the idea, uh, as much as I like the idea of it, and as cool as I find it, I really do think it's emblematic of how much potential is squandered by the series' need to move forward as quickly as possible. Because this could have been a really cool thing. This chapter right did now, spawn the fine. worst take I've ever seen on the internet, though. What's that? The take that uh, Horikoshi is actually a genius because he used Rock Lock intentionally. Because uh, it shows that in his society, mutants have it even worse than uh, than African American people have it uh, today. Oh wow, that's awful! It's one of the worst things I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Maybe you know what? Maybe maybe this chapter wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we should stop putting like complex social themes as, like, window dressing in our stories, because clearly <laughs> some people are not ready for it. Some them. people can't handle it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, no, I, I did like this chapter. I liked how many familiar faces, well, familiar to people who are obsessed with the series, uh, show up in this raid. Like, there's actually quite a few mutants that you can recognize from previous chapters like that are that part of this guy. protest. Yeah, the spider guy is super cool. Uh, he's actually from a previous chapter. He was part of the spinner... Um, fan club hmm. during the first sort also, of collapse. Also, man, my, my boy Spinner uh, needs like a bib or something. He needs uh, he needs a glass of water and some fresh air. <laughs> and maybe, you know, a good night's rest. He does not look good. No, he does not look good at all. Um, but, yeah, I, I sort of wonder what the point of this is going to be. Because uh, one thing I've seen people say is that Spinner is going to save Kurogiri, and Kurogiri is going to warp them to uh, the big fight with Deku, and then Spinner is going to like snap out of it and help Shigaraki snap out of it. And my my response to a theory like that is basically, are we reading the same series? That would only happen if my hero had like a future left. Which at this point, let's be real, Shigaraki is not coming back. He's not yeah, going to be the final I... villain. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, if, I, I if think anything, Shigaraki's era is is done with. Yeah, if anything, the fact that we're dealing with the mutant plot like this probably means that, like, lessens the chances of there being a sequel or My Hero Shippuden, because this was one of those plot threads that you could always sort of hold out hope for that, like, oh, this was never resolved, so maybe there'll be a part In two. In the like, future, now, it, yeah, yeah. But now we're dealing with it, so there won't. But again, I like this chapter. I, I've been shitting on it too, too, way too much for having it in my top three. Like, I did genuinely like that we've gotten gone back to this plot point. Um, I love the flag that says Spinner Speaks for Us. Yes. That's so <laughs> funny. And it's like just this baby boy drawing of him. Um, Which is also funny because, like, don't you think that all of them would be like, hey... Do you think our mascot guy looks a little fucked up right now? <laughs> Any, anyone notice anything weird about that? That he's drooling and grunting like the Incredible Hulk? Hey, you know, it's very stressful being the representative for a mass of 15,000 people. Like, give him a break. He's just a little guy. Well, not anymore, but you know what I mean. Um, and I like Shoji getting to do something. I like that we get to see his face. That's pretty cool. That was his face was genuinely one of those things I didn't think we were ever going to get to, even though Horikoshi kept saying we would. He's got Joker scars. Yeah. He <laughs> he he he's he laughs too hard. No notoriously jolly uh Shoji. That's what I call him every day when I talk about him. Um I, I did talk about him. So <laughs> 
I did think, and uh, this isn't like a take, this is just a vibe, I guess. It was a little weird that Horikoshi chooses to make like a a minority protest and then have his hero be like, oh, but you're just concerned with like breaking things and causing dam property damage. Yeah, when it, it is a act, little... Um... Like when it came to act, the police, they actually help people. And it's like, Hori, I get it. I get it, but this this does come off as a little weird if it's you little, it's look a at it from the wrong angle. Yeah, yeah, from the wrong angle, because this is explicitly a police action against the process. Because we even get told that there's police there, mm -hmm. um, and to be like, oh, but the protesters, they didn't, they don't actually care. They just want to cause havoc. They just when the hospital was attacked, who was there for them? The police. It's like, uh again, yeah. I don't think. I don't think anything is meant by it, but it does come off as a little weird, especially when you make that parallel to like actual minorities. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it because on one hand, it's kind of like, wow, you could really take the worst possible message out of it. But on the other hand, it's so funny if this genuinely just happened by accident. Yeah, just like, I don't wow. know. I feel like it. I don't know Horikoshi enough to make a statement either way, but it definitely is like tone deaf enough to be funny <laughs> either way yeah. i guess i don't think it's uh problematic or whatever it's just weird and yeah kind just of goofy the optics are a little icky yeah horikoshi your vibes are off yeah immediately vibe correct vibe check failed why vibe check well he, he's been failing that for a hot minute um but we don't need to get into that there's like an entire show about me falling out of love with my hero. It's called Shonen and Chill. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this chapter was fun. This was one of my favorite chapters in a while just because, again, I like this sort of granular world building stuff that my hero does, even yeah. when it is a little goofy. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Who's next? Next is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. You think Gege woke up one morning or like one night just drenched in sweat, call, called his editor and just screamed into the telephone, the sorcerers are oil! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really funny that we've now gone to America is going to invade Japan for, for people oil. Mm -hmm. uh, and like the, I really like how like most of the American guys are like fine and normal, and then there's this one that's like comically racist douche with a beret and an eye patch and a crazy mustache. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fucking, it's hilarious. And in a way, I also think it's cool to bring in this angle of like geopolitics, because on one hand, it sort of lends the world a certain a certain level of depth that it otherwise wouldn't have had. But on the other hand, it also doesn't matter. Because really, I don't think Gato or Kenjaku's plan here is anything other than to create as much negative energy as possible. Because like his plan, right, is to like merge the worlds of cursed spirits and humans to like force the evolution of the human race. Right. Well, like a, so a good parallel I feel like is how Yuki thinks that the, the final like form of humanity is what Maki and Toji are. And yeah. I feel like Kenjaku's vision of that is closer to what Naoya became, really. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I feel like that is what his end goal is, is, is merging, basically turning people into spirits to keep, like, evolution progressing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think he's like, I'm going to pit all the nations of the world against each other, and then I'm going to become the leader of all of them, or any shit like that. Like, no, I, yeah, exactly. I don't think he has any sort of like mustache twirling aspiration on that level. Yeah, uh, and also I found it really funny that like the big topic about these last two chapters has been: is it out of is it an ass pull to include the U.S. in a conflict? And the answer is no, of course not. What are you talking about? Have you seen any history of the Earth ever? Yeah, like can you find if, one we haven't been in? <laughs> like, if if a story takes place in the real world, in sort of our time frame, I really don't need any setup for the U.S. to come in, 
in fact, I think this setup is pretty sweet because, you know, we go back in time and we get sort of this very deliberate scene with uh, Kenjaku essentially step by step convincing them of the necessity of uh, cursed energy, energy politics. And uh, so then we can now lead into what I'm assuming is sort of the mid climax of uh, the Culling Games, uh, where I think it would have been an ass pull if suddenly the Culling Games are like, oh, wait, 800 US Marines just joined. <laughs> yeah, just, just stormed the fucking zones. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's weird because people are like, one, the argument that, oh, this wasn't set up enough when it's a story in the real world is weird because like, by being in the real world, you you kind of just expect that the real world exists, right? Like, yeah, I don't think I need, you don't need to set up that the United States and like France and China are there, because mm -hmm. the story takes place in Japan, and Japan yeah. is not a fictional magical world <laughs> where not, well, nothing else some exists. People it is. So, well, yeah, okay, that's fair, but like you don't no. need to set that up. But also, the story does set it up. Like it talks exactly. about like the the value of like after Shibuya, there's a whole page. Where it's like the value of the yen is plummeting, like Japanese geopolitical standing is not go doing too good right now. Yeah, and actually in the hidden inventory, Yuki straight up predicts that ex exactly this. She says that if cursed energy became sort of a known fact, uh, certain nations would race to get their hands on it because mm -hmm. it's so densely concentrated on um, in Japan. Japan. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I I I agree. I, I really don't, I really don't feel the need to like have set up for something like this. If if it takes place in the real world, twenty eighteen, I can accept it because I I am I existed in the real world, twenty eighteen, and so did the U.S. Mm -hmm. and I know that. Um, but yeah, no, it's gonna be very very interesting to see what what happens next. Sort of how does that factor into like the larger plot of the Culling Games? Yeah, um, how I, mean, does I guess it, we're uh, jumping into our gang versus the Marine Corps next week. I love that. I love that. I also really like the panel of Ghetto's giant Buddha elephant man uh, throwing a bunch of soldiers off the roof. Yeah, that's so cool. That's also really cool. Like, uh, Kenjaku really hit the jackpot with Ghetto's ability. Yeah, he sure did. Also, I think it's interesting that, like, the little translation difference between the Japanese version and the, the English one, where in the Japanese version, apparently he calls it Suguru Geto's curse technique, but in the English translation, he just says mine. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, it would make sense that, like, he would specify because Geto can take curse, or I don't know if it's, it, it is Geto's ability that lets him do it, right? Isn't that how he got Mahito's ability? Yeah, because he ate Maito yeah. and it let him. So Ghetto feasibly could have done the same thing, I suppose. Yeah, like it's uh, Kenjaku did the absolute mega mind uh, play of stealing someone's ability, who himself has the ability to steal abilities and to steal mm -hmm. to subjugate other powers. Just uh, absolute fucking Giga Chad move. So uh, yeah, no, that that is actually interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, and apparent, uh, apparently, at least, because I can't read Japanese, so I'm trusting the internet not to lie to me. You better not lie to me. Uh, in the <laughs> Japanese version, he says that Suguru's get, Suguru Ghetto's curse technique will be sufficient, and in the in the English translation, he just says my technique. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, and yeah, of course, the last thing I want to say, I do think General Gary's racism is really funny. It is really funny. Uh, yeah. Call me a bad person, but I really think the panel where he's like, Japanese people should stick to manga, making cars and anime is so fucking dumb and funny. I, I really like how the, the president is like, I nearly need you to stop being racist. <laughs> <laughs> also, the thing immediately after that where he's like, our objective isn't victory, is to present an overwhelming show of force. That's America, baby. And then the very next panel is all the soldiers falling off the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fucking tossed from the roof but uh yeah very cool the culling games just got even more interesting yeah i'm very excited to see this pan out and see because you know it makes a lot more sense now why we spent so much time meeting all these new characters is because now we're gonna have a bunch yes. of people fighting the fucking marines 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know how many Marines they're going to try to send because honestly... It was 800. Someone... Is it just those 800 though? Because like Megumi can take on those 800s probably by himself. I would imagine it's per colony. Oh, okay. And then that's why like we only see 800 on the uh, little, little what, what are those things called? Uh, the Kagune, Kaguna, Ka whatever. Ka Kagana, Kagane, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why uh, we only see 800 on our groups because I think it's probably going to be a per colony thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, all right, do you have anything else to say, or do we move on to the finale? Uh, we can we can jump on to the finale, which for the first time in a very long time has not been either my hero Jujutsu Kaisen or Chainsaw Man. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Undead Unluck, and it am is this was this not the final arc? I guess not. I guess we're gonna get one of of. Fuko in the new loop. Yeah, which is very interesting. It's crazy. Uh, uh, how many stories do you know kill off their entire cast but one character in chapter 132 and then they keep going? Yeah, it's it's wild. And um, the, the cover you... page for this chapter by the way actually made me a little emotional. Like I got I got kind of um, kind of sad about that. Hey, it's okay. I'll hold you. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, can you feel me across the ocean? I I can. That's that's some, something nice. powerful of nice i'll mail you some shortbread <laughs> <laughs> um uh, god these last two chapters have been so good like the fucking desperate scramble in the last chapter and now the whole, the conversation she has with luna and she looks so determined like she's straight up got like Dragon Ball eyes now. Yeah, like the uh, the anime power up scream thing she does on page three. Yeah, like not like her at all. And yeah, like seeing all of them. Also, it was really cool bringing the manga artist back. Yes, that, that, that's the first that they've been there the whole time. Season. And obviously, because mm -hmm. of their power, they can't be perceived. So like we couldn't either. Mm -hmm. Uh, really cool. Yeah, I really like that. Um. In general, just what a paradigm shift. Like, I didn't, I thought that, uh, you know, now she's alone with Luna, she's going to fight her or something or whatever. I, did, I didn't expect that we'd actually get to, like, sit around in the next loop and that this is the actual final thing. That's insane. Uh, but it has, like, this has to sort of be the end. We have to be, like, within not too many chapters of the ending. Because I don't know what else they yeah, can do. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get, like, a full, a full like, arc of the Nulu. I think we'll probably get some abridged stuff going on of, like, Fuko mm -hmm. traveling and re-recruiting everyone. Because mm -hmm. I feel like part of Fuko's ultimate goal here is, like, I want everyone to be back in the way they were before and stuff. And I don't think that uh, she's going to sacrifice that to figure something else out, so... Yeah, but but I I don't think we're gonna get like another hundred and fifty chapters out of this or something. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so either. But also, yeah. wow, Andy's uh, Andy's current fate. Yes, was just like a hundred million years. Like, good God, dude. Yeah, floating through space. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, no, that that fucking double spread where the Earth is destroyed. Fuck, man. Yes, it's really good. And then the, the turnaround a few pages later of Fuko just looking at Luna. Luna with, like, the debris behind her, like, the destroyed remnants behind her. Mm hmm And then immediately next page, she looks so mature now. She does, so yeah. Crazy. She's definitely got, like... I don't know. I, th I bet you could probably find a parallel somewhere in the back. Have we, you know, done more than <laughs> perceive... Um, mm -hmm. where where Weez was di was similar, yeah, probably. Um, also, I really like, um, and I don't know if this is intentional. On page nineteen, when she's sitting like really menacingly in her chair, you know the the manga likes to draw her tits, but in that panel, it looks almost more like pecs. Yeah, it's, it's got a like Goku that. chest going on. Yeah, I like that. It's really cool. 
<laughs> it's really funny again considering where the manga started um and yeah i guess i'm just really curious where this goes now what what the fuck are we gonna do with this story and also, now her hair is super long again like it was in the beginning yes very nice because very people cool. still can't cut her hair mm -hmm. does anyone besides andy mm -hmm. um but yeah that's i think most of what i have to say yeah, same. I don't have a ton to say other than like, it was. It's a very bold choice to kill off your entire cast in in a spectacular fashion like that, and uh, that, it definitely and, hit the mark. Yeah, that that's what I was gonna say. Like, it's not just shocking that they they did that. I mean, death doesn't mean too much in on that unlock thanks to uh, the loop, but still, it's not just shocking that they did that. It's also shocking that it doesn't feel like weird or dumb at all. It's fucking great. Mm -hmm. I'm so Everything excited about for it this moment. Hits. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Undead Unlock is currently definitely one of the top boys in Jump. Mm -hmm, I would absolutely. say. Complete like it's, agreement. Uh, like, it's Jutsu Kaisen, Undead Unlock, on a good day, my hero, and uh, Akane, I would say, are, like, yep. the That's the boys. what I would say is my top four as well. Yeah. But, uh, alright. Is that, is that all? That is it. That's, that's what right. we've got. Perfect. Uh, in that case, I guess we'll see you all whenever we manage to do this again. <laughs> Next time that this happens. Yeah. Um, make sure to not overbake your bread. Mm -hmm. Make sure not to let it be underproved or overbaked or underbaked. Yeah, make sure it's not too short in it. Basically, just do it right is, is <laughs> his advice every time. And if you put figs on pizza, I will find you. Uh, and with that, <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, see you guys next time. All right. Bye.